I had moved to Cardiff, Wales at the age of 24 and was getting to know people. I was sitting talking to a nice guy who I thought was kind of cute when he asked me a pretty simple, normal question, but one that I hate. Do you have any brothers or sisters? I hate this question because I don't know how to answer it. My answer is always going to be a downer. Spoiler alert, my brother is dead. Whenever I answer this question, it just kills the mood and I just don't know how to answer it. Do I answer it, I have a brother, I had a brother, or it's complicated? Yeah, I have a brother, I said, hoping that'd be the end of the conversation and we could move on. It wasn't. Oh, how old is he? Well, I did some quick math. Andrew was seven when he passed away. He'd be about 19 now. He's 19, I said. Again, hoping that'd be the end of the conversation. It wasn't. He pressed on. So what does he do? Okay, so here I'm in uncharted territory. And because I'm in a new country, I decided to try something new. Act like he was still alive, because how could that go bad? He's going to school to be a scientist, I said. I mean, that tracked. Seven-year-old Andrew loved science. He's the only five-year-old I know who dressed up as Albert Einstein for Halloween. So let's pause a minute. You probably have some questions. Maybe this is a meet cute where the boy and girl meet, they fall in love, they get married, and live some awesome transatlantic lifestyle between Wales and US. Let me see. Uh, a, you're probably wondering what Wales is like. B, do you get married? How do you get out of this situation? C, how did Andrew die? D, I, can I feel sorry for you? Or all of the above? So let me answer your questions. A, Wales is awesome, 10 out of 10, would do it again. Miss it all of the time. B, no, we did not get married. In fact, I was so conflicted about my lie that I tracked him down and divulged the truth. Needless to say, if he had been interested in me, that was quickly shut down because one, I lied, and two, who lies about something like that, honestly? Also, I've never done that again. C, how did Andrew die? Well, it was May 1st, 1992. I was on the school bus riding home when we passed an ambulance on the side of the road and I turned to my seatmate Molly and said, wouldn't that be weird if I knew the person in that ambulance? Foreshadowing happens in real life too. So the bus dropped everybody off and I was the last stop. And as we rounded the corner of the road, I saw a bunch of police cars. And our bus driver, Ruthie, pulled up, opened the door and asked if everything was okay. A police officer asked if Megan was on the bus. And I walked down and was pushed back by this fierce warm wind and said I was Megan. He informed me that my seven-year-old brother Andrew had been hit by a car and was on his way to the hospital with my parents and my pastor was going to take me to meet him there. I don't remember a whole lot there, it's kind of a blur. Um, I knew that Andrew had some broken bones and so I figured there'd be some inconveniences and the lucky dog was probably going to get to miss the last few weeks of school because, you know, he was just hit by a car. So clearly everything would be okay, but there'd be some, you know, issues. I didn't know that there were any other options. I'm sorry I ruined the ending for you. He obviously didn't make it. I didn't know that was an option. People generally don't think that siblings are impacted as much as the parents in situations like this. We're just impacted differently. Everyone takes their siblings for granted. Here's a great example. So a few years after my brother passed away, my grandpa called on the anniversary, May 1st. Hi, Meg, are your parents home? He said. Uh, no, Grandpa, they're not here right now. Can I take a message? Oh, sure. I was just calling to tell them I was thinking about them today. My grandpa had no idea what he had done. And maybe it passed over your head too. I was calling to tell them I was thinking about them. 
My grandpa meant no harm, and he wasn't an anomaly. I was so used to that. But this conversation struck a chord with me, and I realized what I had been missing. People didn't think that Andrew's death impacted me, still. They thought I had to be over it by now. I mean, it's just my brother. I've looked for information as I've grown up about sibling loss. There's almost nothing out there for kids under the age of 18 who have lost a sibling like I did. There's more information now for adults who have lost an adult sibling because of suicide, cancer, opioids, COVID-19. But there's not much for the kids. The adults are called forgotten grievers. But I think that applies to kids too. Even further forgotten are the kids down the street who just lost a sibling in an accident like I had, or childhood cancer, or a school shooting. We need to think about them because they are probably feeling like I did, left out and kind of ignored. So it's estimated that 73,000 children die every year in the US, leaving behind about 60,000 siblings. And who's talking to them? Here are five ideas that helped me through the death of my brother and still help me today. Buy a diary. So the best thing someone did was take me to Hallmark during the viewing and buy me this cheesy 90s diary. It's got a really ridiculous poem on the cover about watching the world through curious eyes. It's full of awful handwriting. The lock doesn't even work most of the time. See, can't even get it open right now. And the thing is, is it was so helpful. As an adult, I've looked through it and I've remembered things I've forgotten. And if I'd had some journal prompts in it, I would remember even more. So buy him a journal or a diary and write some prompts in it to help them. Just check in on them. It's estimated that children take about six years to recover from loss, if you really can. And people stop checking in after three months. So check in. Don't be afraid that you're gonna upset them because honestly, knowing that someone's thinking about them and remembering their sibling helps way more than you can ever imagine. So put some reminders in your calendar. Check in, anniversaries, birthdays, just because you're thinking of them. Buy a plant. Buy a plant, put it in the ground, and make sure that they know that it's in honor of their sibling. My brother's school did that for us, and it helps so much to be able to drive past and know that he was remembered. Don't forget to talk about them. Talk about the sibling, tell the funny stories. Let the dust settle a little bit, but don't be afraid to talk about the funny things that have happened as well, because there was a life there full of laughter and a few sibling fights. Create a box or a bin with the sibling who's lost someone or their parents and collect things that were important to the sibling. My parents did that when my brother died and it meant so much to me years later knowing that in their grief, they had thought of me. In Andrew's box was his favorite stuffed animal growing up, which they gave to my daughters when they were born. Um, 90s, 80s clothing with their ridiculous neon patterns, artwork from school, and a few of his favorite toys, like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and Transformers. So I think these ideas could work for any kind of loss a child is experiencing. If you know someone going through this right now, check in on them, put some reminders in your calendar, give them an extra tight hug and ask them their story, get them a journal, put some prompts in it. And if you are a sibling who's just gone through this, you're not alone. And if you're like me and you've lost one as a child, me too. So a few last things. Now if you ask me, uh, do you have any siblings? I say, yeah, I lost my brother a while ago in an accident. So while I haven't always been an only child, I am now. And Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles will always be awesome, just like Andrew said they were.